Hey guys, what's up? I'm Greg. He's cute. Together with Mr. Happy 0121 and today... Buffalo... Buffalo chicken strips. I got the five piece. Got in a meal. It was eight dollars. That's weird. A five piece? Kind of weird. It's usually like don't restaurants. It seems like the, the number is always even. Like you, you're not going to get like an 11 piece. It's like... They don't six. want you sharing. Okay. They're like... You want to share, you each get a meal. The other option was the three-piece. That's weird. They weren't giving it up. The standard breaded chicken that everyone else uses was some funk poured on it. Bite one. Uh-oh. It's a little spicy. Not too vinegary for my taste on bite one. That's good. That's a good thing for me. Bite two. Mmm. Bite three. What's really awesome is when there's that piece of gristle in the middle and you're trying to bite and the mm -hmm. chicken explodes into a million pieces. This was okay. <laughs> I don't really see the point of sitting down and eating this. It's like bar food. If I was somewhere watching a game, wanted some beers, but to order this as a meal just to sit around and just eat it, I think it would be pretty awesome, and I do believe they have it, on a sandwich. With some lettuce, some nice crisp lettuce, maybe a little ranch. This, 80. Yourself. I agree, absolutely. It's pretty good. Um, it's not too vinegary. And it's not too hot. It's like, it's pretty all right. I yeah, guess. the heat just the heat's kind of just sitting there, but it's not like... It feels like... You're aware of it. It feels like when you eat something really spicy and you know it's about to get really hot. It's like that, but it doesn't get really hot. It stops there. It's just like... Yeah. Eh. It's like it builds up and then just... Yeah, it's really not that bad. So before we talk about the UFO thing today, let's hear about your pigs. What's been going on? Now, let me fill people in. They had a pig house, like a yeah. dog house. How long have they lived in that house? Years. They've had this house for a while, and simply put, when it gets cold, they go in, there's a heat light in there, and it keeps them alive. <laughs> this year, there was some form of bad experience in the pig house, <laughs> and they refused to go into their home. Literally. It was like, it got down like, this was like a month ago, keep in mind. More than a month ago, I think. It got down to like 28 degrees, and they just sat outside. They're like 28 yeah. degree weather, like stubbornly. Screw not, it. We tried to like shove them in. I've tried on like multiple occasions to coax them in there with food. You just walk in halfway, eat it, and then leave. They would not stay in there. It's true. So at this point, Grizzly Adams, Mr. Hart, has uh, fashioned because, like, you know, wood costs money, believe it or not, and this is a pretty big house. He got desperate, and you started making one out of tarps. Yeah, well, there was already a tarp down there, so I figured I'd try and, like, use some more plastic to kind of... Because it was made in the corner of the pen, which is made out of fence, so I was going to try and plastic off the, the corners so it'd be a little more, like, wind protective. Yeah? So, and, and I was using really thin plastic, so I'm going down there. There's this other stuff down there. I don't even know what it is. It's just down there. It's, like, this roll of stuff that's, like, plastic and, like, kind of felt. I don't know. It's weird. I'm using that to, like, reinforce the sides and cover up the fence so that way the heat lamp in there... What, so to retain heat and like block the wind. That stuff you're talking about is go between when you're doing roofing. You've got the roof, and then before you put the shingles, it's. Oh, that's what that is. I don't know where that came from. That's good though. It's weatherproof. Awesome. So you got that going for you. Got that going for me. So how are the pigs now? The, well, they're staying in that little tarp area. So. That good. got some hay in there going. Got some hay in there going, and hopefully after I finish this, it'll be. It'll keep it all the heat in so they won't get too cold. <laughs> Last night was friggin' cold, night. man. It was, it was like... Really cold. It's, it's gonna get colder tonight. It's gonna get down to like 24 or something, I think. Well, see, you sleep. He got up at 3 in the afternoon at one point yesterday. Now, this is Arkansas cold, man. I've lived in Colorado at one point. It didn't get above zero for like a month. Jesus. Really? But like Arkansas cold, 16, 18 degrees is pretty damn cold here. Uh, it got below 20 last night, so it was a test. It was a test. Your pigs are still breathing, though, huh? They're still breathing. Still above air. I'm sure some pig expert will tell us everything we've done wrong and how to herd them in. Yeah, fully on them. I don't care. Ah, uh, yeah, and the pig expert probably doesn't have pigs. That's right. It's easy to tell a person what to do with a pig, but to try to direct a 400-pound pig to do something, 
Very different story. Yeah, and they're not like really docile or submissive. If you push them too much, they'll they'll get, they'll get a little you. pissy. Yeah, and they uh, they make really. Weird. I didn't know this. Pigs make weird noises. They can bark. It's, it's <laughs> my favorite thing animals. about your pigs was um, what kind of pigs were they supposed to be? Teacup pigs. Ah, they were supposed to be miniature pigs. What was the maximum size they were going to be? Well, see, I didn't really do all this research, but you read online, you see pictures, and you just see pictures of cute pigs this big, and you're like, oh, okay, at most it'll probably get, like, this big. No, it's it's basically half the size of a normal pig. Maybe, if you know how big a normal pig is. Normal pigs are huge, so. It's half the size of a gigantic normal pig. These yeah. are big pigs. Fat. You've seen them before. They're in videos. Maybe, maybe again, instead of, like, Putting extra footage of your cat catching mice. Maybe we'll uh, put some pig footage down. That'll be exciting. I don't know, man. If you keep growing out there, your little, um, I don't know, complex of buildings for the pigs is now nicer than half of our neighbor's homes. So you may want to stop it because they're going to get <laughs> jealous and try to move in. Let them. It's good that you're having this practice, though, because if you're ever homeless, you'll know how to build yourself a little home. Yeah, that's true. I it's a good skill nice. to have. If I was gonna be homeless, I'd, I'd want to like locate to a place that's like warm year round. That's why they're all in California for the most part, except for the ones I've never understood in New York. Well, I mean, it's not like their choice. If you're homeless in New York, you probably don't have like the means to move to a warmer climate. But yeah, being homeless sucks. So yeah, my point was, you can just start walking like Forrest Gump. You're still homeless. It's not like you got to carry any possessions. You're homeless. You're not losing your job by walking to California. Yeah, but I mean, you don't have money to eat. You don't have money to eat in New York. Yeah, but if you kind of sit around and dig through, I, okay, maybe you could, I don't know. But I feel like if I was in New York, I would just stick it out there and not try and make a long, long journey. That's the kind of th thinking that got you homeless because you're too lazy to commit to something. Yeah. Maybe if you, were, if you had enough commit to walk to California, you wouldn't be homeless. Here comes the comments from the homeless people. <laughs> no, I don't think there's going to be any comments from the homeless people. I was, impressive. I was in a library today walking by and someone was talking about homeless people. I was very offended. That's funny. I guess that's one group of people you can really that's, pick on. That's the last group of people. They can't fight back. Not on the internet anyway. Yeah, don't have to hear from them. Or those people that have never like made contact with us. You know, they, they have those groups of people that live deep in the forest. That oh somehow... yeah, that are still like living in tribes. Yeah, I don't know how that works. They must be the dumbest people ever. No, I don't think so. They just never developed past a certain like structure of civilization or whatever. Or felt the need to walk out three miles past their campground in the entire history of their life. <laughs> How does that work? I don't know, because they're living in a... Is there not anyone in the group that has the urge to just explore? No one for 10,000 years. They just... Nope. They just stay there, I guess. Stupid. <laughs> See, we could insult them. You know who else yeah. we can insult? Don't forget. People from Vermont. People. Oh, oh yeah. We haven't forgotten you, Vermont. Even though you forgot us. Now let's let's yeah. bail. I'm good. Vermont sucks. Vermont is the toilet bowl of the U.S. Yeah, man. It's like that one dude said. If you were gonna stick an enema into the U.S., it would go right in Vermont. Yeah. Screw you, Vermont. Can you imagine the person that's just tuning in for the first time ever and has actually made it this far into the video, and we're just Maybe randomly trashing Vermont and they don't understand why? Wasn't Jeffrey Dahmer from Vermont? I don't know if he was, but he is now. That's right. Manson, too. Manson. He was there. He was there. Man, we didn't have time to fit in that oh, UFO man. talk. But you've, you've got the materials. We'll talk about it later. Until next time, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can find us on all social media. Mr. Happy 0121. Stay vigilant.